What's happening everyone? Steve here, Cars with Steve, and today I'm gonna to show you everything you need to know about Sync 4 inside of the 2021 Ford Bronco. Now this is the eight inch productivity screen. If you're looking for the 12 inch screen where it has some more flexibility and options, check down into the description below because I've put together a comprehensive video on that one as well. But let's dive into it, have a little bit of fun and see what that Sync 4 system is all about. This is the Sync 4 media screen that's going to be standard inside of the Ford Bronco. Now, when we get into some of the higher packages, like the high and the Lux package, it's going to be a 12 inch screen instead with some added flexibility. Now, this specific one, we are on the home page and it does not have factory navigation, which if yours doesn't have factory nav, don't worry about it because we can use Apple Maps, Google Maps, Waze, etc. by connecting through Android Auto or Apple CarPlay. But basics, we've got our audio there, we've got our compass as well as our phone. Let's actually go tab, to, tab by tab to kind of figure out and do a few and learn a few things. So, starting off with our audio tab we've got a few different options so looking at sources we can change between am fm sirius xm bluetooth audio if we had a usb stick with mp3s that would also work through the screen as well moving back we can direct tune so we can tune there we've got a tuning knob a little bit further down as well so we've got a lot of flexibility and as you can see there we can have a mix of am fm sirius xm etc and very simple so we can direct tune there Let's just say 94.9. We're going to change it. Oh, I think I was already on 94.9 regardless, but we can easily change the station that way if we wanted to. In order to save a preset, all we're going to do is change to whatever station we want to, and then we're just going to press and hold, and the preset's now saved. So it's that simple. Connecting a phone to the vehicle is also very straightforward. So as you can see there, it's asking us to add in a phone. So all we're going to do is just press the add phone button. Search for your vehicle on your device and select it once it is found. All right. And then on your phone, you're just going to want to make sure that you've got the Bluetooth turned on and we've got Bronco there. So we're just going to press Bronco. Confirm that the pin displayed on sync matches the pin displayed on your device. And making sure that the pin numbers match up, which in this case they do. So we're going to hit yes and pair. Okay, perfect. So it wants to allow my access and contacts to sync. Yes, we want to do that. So we're going to allow. For your safety, please stay alert to changing road conditions and use sync's voice activated features while your vehicle is in motion. Okay, so perfect. So we're technically connected. We just have to do one last thing and that's turning on 911 assist. And the big reason why you want to do that is because if the vehicle senses a collision, it's automatically going to dial 911 for us to talk to the operator. Hitting finish there, we are now connected. And now next up, setting up Apple CarPlay, also very straightforward. So phone supports CarPlay, so in order to be able to connect it on the phone, we've got a message that pops up. So use CarPlay with Sync 4. So yes, we're gonna use CarPlay. All right, so device supports Apple CarPlay. So in order to be able to enable, we're just gonna literally do that. So we're gonna enable, and just a second there, three, two, one, and we are connecting and connected. All right, so CarPlay and we are fully connected now. So as you can see there, we've got my Apple Maps, we've got Google Maps and we've got Waze and we can use all of these directly through this middle screen. So I love that flexibility. So if yours doesn't have factory navigation, don't worry about it because we do have the option of using Apple Maps, Google Maps or Waze directly through this middle screen. We've got my messages, we've got audiobooks, podcasts and a number of other options there. Now, one thing that is unique about the iPhone side of things is that if we jump into our general settings, we go into CarPlay, we can look at Sync 4 that we've just connected to and let's say if you have a tendency to, oh, I don't know, maybe listen to podcasts a bit more, drag drop to the top if you like your audiobooks. So you can customize this and it's automatically going to do it on the fly. Now, if you've deleted some things accidentally, they do show up at the very bottom of the screen there. But we can also just do a reset at the very top and we can reset it back to our factory layout screen instead. Moving back again, we've got our basics. Now, if you want to jump out of this screen, we're just going to hit the forward button there, and that brings us out. So we're now out of it. We can jump back into either Apple CarPlay, Android Auto, etc. We can look at our app catalog, and we've got LiveX Live. So LiveX Live is a radio app, so we can use those apps directly through this middle screen, which I love that fact. So LiveX Live is one of them. I think Pandora is the other radio app that will work directly through this middle screen. If we want to be able to disable CarPlay, it's pretty straightforward. All we're going to do is go into our settings screen. We're going to go to phone list. We've got my phone that's connected and we've got my CarPlay phone settings and things like that. So if we jump into phone settings for a second, that's where we can get into things like setting ringtones, etc. But everything here is actually grayed out. And the reason why is because we're connected to CarPlay. So if we disable that for a second, so we, we can reconnect if we want to. So we're gonna connect to Bluetooth media. Perfect, and we are connected there. We jump back into my phone. We've got my phone settings now, which we can manage contacts. We can set my ringtone. We can use roaming and a number of other things. So pretty straightforward there. And moving back, we can jump in. And if we wanted to disconnect the phone, all we're gonna do is literally that. So we're gonna disconnect if we want to. We can click on that so we can disconnect. 
We can trash the phone as well, so we can disconnect and we can completely remove the phone. And it's literally that simple to be able to attach, disconnect the phone directly through this, this middle screen. You know, connecting an Android device is literally the exact same process. So firstly, what we're going to do, we're in settings there, so we can literally add a phone from a ton of different spots. But at Search the end of the day, your vehicle on your device and select it once it is found. That's what we need to do. We need to press the add phone button somewhere. And then on our phone, all we're going to do is just pull up Bluetooth and we're just going to wait for the device to actually show up there. So same thing on the Apple side of things. We're just going to hang off for a second. There we go. So as you can see, Bronco shown up and we're just going to press Bronco there. Confirm that the pinless blade on sync matches the pinless blade on your device. All right, and making sure that everything matches up there. So as you can see, the numbers do match up. So we're going to hit OK on the phone, and we're going to hit Yes. All right, so For allow access. Safety, please stay alert to changing road conditions and use Sync's voice-activated features while your vehicle is in motion. Thank you, car. All right, so as you can see there, device supports Android Auto, so we can simply enable it there. But on my phone, before we do that, it's asking, do I want to allow access to my contacts? Yes, we want to allow to contacts and messages. And now supporting Android Auto, we just need to make sure we enable it here. All right, and Android Auto would like to, so we need to make sure we turn on Bluetooth to be able to connect. So just a second, and three, two, one, and look at that. We are now fully connected. So as you can see there, we do have maps. We can easily search for some things if we want to. We can do our basics for our settings as well. Moving along the very bottom, so as you can see the bottom tray, we also have our notification center as well as our Google Assistant. So really that simple to be able to connect to this thing. Now, one thing to note, so as you can see there, we've got my phone, we've got my messages and a number of other things. We don't have quite the number of things that we did have on the iPhone side of things, but it is nice. We do still have at least a little bit of flexibility. Now, one of the nice things, very similar to the iPhone side of things, if we look at the actual Android device, we can hit Android Auto there, and we've got some Android Auto settings. So very similar to the iPhone side of things, it's going to show us what's going on with the car. We've got our customizable launcher. Now, this is the big one, because if you have a tendency, oh, maybe you want your Maps application at the very top instead, we've got some flexibility as to what's actually showing up and what's there and what's not. But unlike the iPhone side of things, this is not a dynamic update. So we actually have to close down Android Auto and then relaunch in order for those changes to take into account. But it is nice that we can still customize what's going on with that screen. We've got our Google dictation, so our Google detection there. We can also, we've also got our Google Assistant and a number of other things. So that's kind of nice that we've got some flexibility when it comes down to it. And one of the cool things is that we are wireless, so we can know wireless Android Auto and Apple CarPlay. Now, having said that, we are technically wireless, but we don't have a wireless charging pad in this specific vehicle, though. If we looked at some of the higher packages, wireless charging would be available, but in this specific one, we do not have it. Now, in order to be able to disconnect the phone from the vehicle, very straightforward, we press the forward button there. And as you can see, we can jump back into our Android Auto if we'd like to, but we go into our settings, phone list, Galaxy. We could disable Android Auto if we wanted to. So it's now disabled. We've got my phone settings as well. So we can connect back in order to look at to those settings. We jump into our phone. Let's actually reconnect for a second so you can see some of these settings. So you can see we've got my favorites, recent calls, contacts, voice assistant, and a number of other things. Jumping into the phone list for a second, that hot button presses us into this. Clicking on the Galaxy, we can trash it, disconnect it, and look at that. It is now completely disconnected and it is gone from the vehicle. It really is that simple. That is going to be adding in a phone, so very straightforward. As we jump into our apps, as you can see there, we can jump into Android Auto, Apple CarPlay. Obviously the phone needs to be connected, which as of right now, I'm fully disconnected for both. Jumping into some settings though, so we've got some more advanced settings. So we've got our basic for our radio. So radio, we've got some different texture preset pages. Preset pages, I always recommend just going for the maximum number of pages. So we've got six pages there. Jumping back into our audio for a second. So as you can see, we've got 30 individual presets now. So we've got a lot of flexibility when it comes down to it. Jumping back, so as you can see, I jumped into a Sirius XM station, which those audio settings are now Sirius XM. So going through, we've got some basic sound settings, we've got our subscription, we can personalize it so we can create individual listeners. Really useful if we've got multiple people driving the vehicle. We've got our listening history, preset pages, and a number of other things. Now if we jump back, then we jump into another station, so just an AM, FM, an AM FM station, jump back into our settings, that's brought us back to our radio tab instead. We can add in a phone, we've got some basic for our settings, so treble, mid-range, bass, balance, fade, etc. We've got some basics for the vehicle as well, so our 30 minute idle, rear occupant alert, so when we go to turn the vehicle off after we've moved, it's going to give us a little message on screen letting us know to check the back seats. We've got our mind key, which gives us flexibility to create limitations for the key fob, so maximum speed, maybe 100 kilometers an hour, so you can set that up easily. We've got our windows as well. 
So windows we can remote open, which means we can use the key fob in order to be able to open those windows up. Let's hop outside to see how that process works. Now, in order to use the key fob to roll the windows down is a very straightforward process. Now, one thing to note, it is going to be rolling down using the key fob, but we have to roll them back up by hopping inside and just powering them up there instead. But in order to roll them down, very straightforward, we're going to press that unlock button twice. On the second button press, we're going to hold. Now, one other thing to point out is that we can pause it partway through by also pressing the lock button. So we're going to go one, two, and hold. So you can see they're rolling down. We press the lock button in order to stop it partway. And then we can also restart by pressing that twice again. So lock, unlock, unlock, and hold. And they're going down the rest of the way there. And it really is that simple. So that is pretty cool. Now, I, would, I do wish that they gave us the option of remote closing as well. Unfortunately, we do not have that option in this vehicle. Moving down a tiny little bit, we do have our wipers as well. So wiper courtesy wipe, what that's going to do is with the courtesy wipe on, if the windshield wipers are going, it's going to stop for a second and then go one more time to get rid of any excess liquid that's hitting that windshield. We've got our lighting as well, so our auto high beam. So our auto high beam is automatically going to flip our high beams on four if it's, if it's too dark. If it senses a vehicle oncoming, it's going to start dimming them, turn them off, and then bring them right back to life again. Our auto lamp delay, when we go to lock the vehicle, does, it, does the light stay on for 10 seconds, 20 seconds, 120 seconds? And then we've got some basic for our locks there as well. So our auto unlock, lock, miss lock chirp. So miss lock chirp is an interesting one because if the doors aren't completely shut, we go to lock it, it's going to give us a double chirp and letting us know that we haven't properly shut the doors. A remote unlock, so when we go to unlock the vehicle, do all doors become unlocked or is it just the driver's side door? And then moving back again, that's going to be the basics of the vehicle settings. We've got our clock, so we've got our hour and minute. We can go AM, PM, we can go to our 24 hour mode if we wanted to. General settings, quite a few options. We've got English, Spanish, French, Celsius, Fahrenheit, K uh, PSI. We can, we've got that touchscreen beep, which if that beep drives you nuts, you can disable it if you wanted to. And if you're ever selling the vehicle or if it's giving you issues, you can just reset it to bring it back to our factory default again display as big and nice and beautiful as this screen is if you find it a little distracting we can turn the display off if we want to button press to bring it back to life or we can go to a calming screen so we've got our date and time instead same thing button press to bring it back to life moving into brightness we can also adjust the brightness for the screen and we've got a few different modes so as of right now this is the daytime mode but we can flip it out to auto which means it's going to flip between the daytime or the nighttime mode depending on how bright is it bright it is outside i personally always leave it at night because i love the look of this but daytime is going to be this the the lighter mode that we saw there with auto flipping us between one mode or the other, depending on the brightness. Moving back, we've got our connectivity as well, so we can connect to our Wi-Fi network at home. And we've got our vehicle hotspot, so vehicle can be used for a hotspot for up to 10 devices, but we do need a data-only plan through our cell phone provider in order to be able to do that. Mobile apps, certain mobile apps will work over USB, so things specifically on the Android side of things. So on Android Auto, you may need to be connected through USB for some apps to work, so we can en enable that one if we wanted to. Our system updates, which always recommend make sure you turn system updates on as well, and you can schedule when updates gonna, are going to happen. We've got our 911 assist, which we've already covered that one off, and then our valet mode. So valet mode, what that's going to do is lock the screen out. So we enter in a four-digit number. It's going to lock the screen out so that a valet driver, etc., cannot access anything that's in the vehicle. Moving into our features now. So one thing to point out firstly is our owner's manual. So everything is now digital. So that's one of the cool things because rather than having a printed manual, we can just go into the vehicle to figure out what those dash lights are instead. So really, really nice that we've got that option there. And it's gonna show up in just a sec. So as you can see, we've got our categories, visual searches and things like that. So a lot of flexibility. And then our driver assistance. So driver assistance, we've got our pre-collision assist. So pre-collision assist, what that's going to do is if it senses an active collision, it's going to let us know. And then emergency braking is automatically going to try to brake in order to ideally avoid the collision completely. We can turn that system off though if we wanted to. Rear camera delay, and then we've also got our hill start assist. So that's going to be the sync four screen in a nutshell. So that is a pretty cool system, right? And it's very straightforward. But if you ran into any issues, drop down in the comment section below and let me know. More than willing to talk you through any issues that you might be having. If you enjoyed the video, give it a thumbs up, share it with your social networks. And until I see you next time, make sure you stay safe.